Great. Hi, welcome to Berg's Home Worship. I am today at Lake Junaluska, North Carolina on the grounds of the Lake Junaluska Assembly. I'm standing in front of George Stewart Auditorium where we've just had um, our Southeastern Jurisdictional Conference. This year, three bishops were um, selected and consecrated in worship here this morning. This uh, building is, um, has been here for 109 years in use by the United Methodist, and we are very glad to have it here as part of the, the wonderful retreat center and place of worship that it is. It is said that more bishops have, have been uh, consecrated on the stage of Stewart Auditorium than any other single place in the history of the United Methodist Church. So this is a, a very wonderful place and a place that is part of our church and where many things happen that make a difference in the uh, United Methodist Church in our area. I hope sometime you'll get to come and visit here and maybe even uh, go to the uh, museum that is here on campus and um, that you'll be able to enjoy the lake that is also here. Let us continue now in our worship. Here in front of the statue to Chief Junalesco, who was a leader in the um, Eastern Band of the Cherokee Indians. He at one time fought with the United States Army and saved the life of uh, future President Andrew Jackson, who later unfortunately uh, enslaved Junaluska's people and moved them to Oklahoma. It was maybe one of the worst decisions he ever made. I wanted to tell you about a few announcements this, uh, that are happening this week. Next Saturday at uh, 8.30, there will be a men's um, breakfast at Burke's, sponsored by the men at Burke's, and they will have a um, speaker who will be talking about changes in Medicare laws for 2023. On um, the 16th of November, we will be finishing our classes on Wednesday night, so I hope that you will come between now and then. And then on uh, next Sunday, uh, November 13th, we will be having a guest. Um, Gil Smith, one of our former pastors, will be coming and sharing the message with us on that morning. So we welcome you to come and participate in those events. And uh, we hope that you will find a way in which to get more involved in Burke's. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Creator of heaven and earth. Let us pray. Almighty, Almighty God, God, by, by your Son, Son Jesus Christ, Christ and the Holy Spirit, Spirit you gave to your apostles many excellent gifts. Give your grace to all servants of your church, that we may with diligence and faithfulness fulfill our various ministries. Grant that we, your people, may follow where you lead and live in joyful obedience to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
believe in God the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day He arose from the dead, He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in a time of prayer from this beautiful place at Lake June, Alaska. In front of me, uh, there is the cross that is uh, lit all year round, and it uh, reminds people to look up towards Christ. So let us do that as we come together to pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this beautiful place, but we thank you for all the beautiful places that you have created. We thank you for our church, Berkshire United Methodist Church, and we thank you for its people. We especially on this All Saints Sunday are remembering those who have passed away during this last year. We remember them as fellow believers in Jesus Christ. We remember them as people who love to share together their faith. And we remember them as, as part of our community. We ask, Lord, that you would bless their families and and help them during the holiday season that is coming up. That you would bless our church as we miss their presence with us as we worship. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would um, be with the churches all around the world as they remember those who have gone before us. And we thank you for their witness and for their love that help to strengthen us in our witness and love today. We pray for the churches of the Southeastern Conference, and we especially pray for those who have been elected bishops this week. Help them as they learn about their new job. Help them as they go to new places to do your work. And may you go before them with your spirit to prepare the way for them. We pray all of these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our first scripture this morning is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 11 through 23. In Christ we have obtained an inheritance, and having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. That the Lord God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may perceive what is the hope to which he has called you, 
what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God to you from the Southeastern Jurisdictional Headquarters of the United Methodist Church, the Lake Junaluska Assembly. If you know anything at all about Methodism, you know that we are a connectional denomination. We do things together that one of, one of us alone, one group, one class, one church could never do. We minister all over the world. At this place, annual conferences are held and various ceremonies that mark the dedication and the ministry of many persons throughout our jurisdiction. 14 annual conferences, seven states I think, and of which Holston is one. And we are fortunate enough to be one of the few conferences outside the state of North Carolina that elects to have their annual conference apart from pandemic lockdowns in this space. We've just been fortunate enough to be here for the Southeastern Jurisdictional Conference and to, sorry, and to um, be able to be a part of the witness that stretches far and wide all over our area as bishops are elected, consecrated, and resolutions are passed that will go all the way to the general conference. These things couldn't happen without your support. Did you know that when you give an offering at burks.org backslash give or at Burks UMC in person, that you are helping this to exist? You are making a part of something that is so much bigger than yourself. When you make buckets for, food buckets for Zimbabwe, for Ishi and Esu, they come here and are blessed and sent on their way. A truck pulls them out in their shipping container and we wave and the horns blow and everyone sends a prayer with things that you have sent from Hickson, Tennessee or through your gift online. Your, your mission and your ministry is held together with this glue. So when you give, Please think about all the things that happen in Chattanooga, in Hickson, in our own parking lot when people come for food and sustenance and encouragement. Because trust me, friends, when you drive up to that food box and you need what's in it, the fact that there are things there every single day are a sign of friendship and a sign of trust and a commitment that we have made. And I urge you to keep making that commitment when you think of your gifts. Please bow your heads in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity to be a faithful community together that extends within this building, outside this building, into our community, and all the way around the world, and to right here in North Carolina, making all of these things possible. Together, we are your church. Amen. Today's scripture comes from Luke chapter 6, verses 20 to 31. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, 
for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you for being with us this morning as we um, participate in Burke's Home Worship. And thank you for letting me take you on a little tour of Lake Junalaska. Now I'm back here in Hickson and getting ready for Sunday morning. And it's All Saints Day this week. We always struggle a little bit with that concept in the church. We don't really think of each other as saints because we're family. We know each other's good sides and our bad sides, and, and we know stories from the past that we haven't forgotten yet or forgiven somebody for. So we struggle with the idea of somebody being called a saint. I attended a church one time where they had, on All Saints Day, they had a bulletin with everybody's name on the front, and in front of it, it had the word saint. So, St. Tony, St. Susan, St. James, St. whoever. And it was almost kind of uncomfortable to look at that title. I also received a hat one day. It was a long time ago, and I, I still have it, but I don't wear it. Because it was kind of a, a bold hat. It was uh, purple, and, and in big gold letters on the front it says, Man of God. You know, we ought to all want to have something that proclaims to the world that we are a person who is a believer in Jesus Christ. But we feel a little uncomfortable doing that or proclaiming it quite as loudly as that hat did. So I rarely wore it. And usually only when the person who gave it to me was around. But today, we recognize that there are people in our community of faith who are brothers and sisters in Christ, and that we are a family. And that means not only do we know each other's uh, shortcomings and, and our uh, great accomplishments, but we also understand that we belong together. And we're called to help each other and to love each other. The gospel lesson is what I want to focus on, but I, I want to take just a minute to look at the, the uh, scripture from Ephesians. It's one of the most beautiful passages in the Bible, I believe. It says, uh, starting in verse 17, he says, uh, I pray that God, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your hearts enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which God has called you. What are the riches of God's glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of God's power for us? who believe, 
according to the working of God's great power. Those are beautiful words, and, and I hope that you'll look at those again. Those three verses are, are just packed with amazing images of what it's like to be a child of God. It doesn't mean that you're perfect. It doesn't mean you have everything figured out. It doesn't mean that you uh, won't make any mistakes because we know we all make mistakes and sometimes we do things that aren't mistakes. They're purely sin. And we did them not because we made a mistake, but we did them on purpose. But God still loves us anyway. <clears throat> the gospel passage today is from Luke chapter 6, and it's going to sound familiar to you because it is very much like the gospel of Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12, that we call the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes are, are eight things that uh, Matthew reports that Jesus said that would make us blessed. Blessed are those and blessed are these other people, and blessed are others in many different ways. And Luke tells the, the same story. This is uh, the same sermon that Jesus uh, had preached with a few changes because Luke wasn't actually there and he was hearing it from somebody else. But here he says, blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Now, to be honest, we kind of feel a little bit more comfortable with the uh, Matthew version of this because it says, with the poor in spirit. And somehow that makes it a little bit easier for us to swallow, but to say, blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of heaven makes us look at the world in a very different way. And I think that's one of the keys to this passage in Luke, is to get us to look at the world in a different way. Kind of an upside-down way, if you will. Not very long ago, we celebrated uh, World Communion Sunday, and we had a, a map um, that was on the front of the altar and it wasn't done intentionally, but uh, we noticed later that we had put the world upside down. And the people in church were very uh, gracious, and nobody mentioned it. Well, one person did, but they weren't mad about it. They just thought it was interesting that we'd put it upside down. And I thought, when I was preparing this sermon, this is exactly what Jesus was trying to do what Luke was trying to do in writing down these words is to turn our world upside down. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. And then in his version here, there is also a corresponding woe. A woe to you. Woe to you who are rich. For you have received your consolation. That's not nearly as hopeful as what we see in Matthew's version at all. But it reminds us that we are rich compared to most of the world. Even we in our, um, in, in our existence here in this country, even if it were a meager existence, would be much more rich and wealthy than those around the world who live in, in very difficult situations. So to turn the world upside down and begin to look at those who are poor and have Jesus remind us that that's the way of our, that we should look, well, that's very important. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. And blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. And blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you and revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. 
Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward in is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. Those sound like good words, but they're again turned upside down. Very few of us would find it easy to rejoice because something, somebody's saying something bad about us or reviling us or defaming us. Those things hurt us, regardless of what the uh, children's rhyme says. Words can hurt us, and they can cause us to second-guess ourselves, and they can call us to lose our, cause us to lose our confidence and cause us to forget that we are part of the family. The other parts, the woes, go something like this. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. Woe to us when some of these things happen. Woe to us if we get too comfortable being full now and happy now and having good things said about us now because we know that's not how life goes every day. The truth is, is that there are times when, when we do feel poor and there, there are times when we feel very rich and there are times when we feel very empty and there are times when we do feel full. And there are times when people say nice things about us and we, we are puffed up perhaps a little bit and, and, and maybe filled with pride. But we also know how quickly that pride can go away when someone says something bad about us. Being a saint in the church is not about having everything all together. It's really about the fact that we believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We may not know all the things that we should believe about him. We may not know uh, exactly how to explain some of the things we've experienced about Jesus. But we are believers, and that's what a saint means. Yes, there'll be times when we might cry out, help me in my unbelief. But mostly we are pretty sure that we believe that Jesus is who everybody says that he is. A savior, a person who loves us, a person who guides us and teaches us and heals us and makes us whole. And for that reason, we are working to learn how to live according to his will. And then if you just go down to verse 27, you'll hear the rest of this sermon. It's a very abbreviated version compared to uh, Matthew's Sermon on the Mount. Jesus says, but I say to you, that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you, if anyone strikes you on the cheek, don't withhold the other one. And from anyone who takes your coat, do not keep your shirt. Give that to them as well. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, don't ask for them back again. 
do to others as you would have them do to you. Now, I know it'd be easy to take all those things apart and, and, and say, but what about this? Or, or what if it happened this way? Or surely you don't expect me to do this. But what I think Jesus is saying here is that we are to love each other and to forgive each other even better than we forgive our families even better than we love our families. But this extends to our families as well. We are to love, to forgive, and to seek to live a life that would be worthy of the gift that God has given to us. And yes, I know we can't do this by ourselves. We need what Paul talked about when he said the immeasurable um, power of his spirit in order to be able to do these things. Does that mean we're going to be wrong sometimes? Yes, it is. Does it mean we're going to struggle sometimes? Yes, it does. Does it mean that we're going to have a hard time loving somebody? Yes. It does mean that, and sometimes we will not love them because we were just didn't know how to do it right. And sometimes we'll not love them because we chose not to love them. We still struggle with how to do that, even with the people that are our physical nuclear family or our extended family or the people in our community that are part of our family, much less those that we don't know very well or we don't see very well or we don't listen to very well. At annual conference, um, at the jurisdictional conference this week, not everything went well. Some people's hearts were hurt deeply. Some spoke loudly and did not, fear, uh, did not feel that they had been heard. Some got very defensive and said, oh, well, we didn't mean to hurt you, but that didn't take away the hurt, even though that was said. The other thing we almost always do on All Saints Day, and we will do this in person here at church today, is we will receive communion. And as we receive that communion, we will remind each other that we are forgiven, not by the power of our actions, not by the power of somebody else's actions, not because we qualify in some way because of our history or our family or any of those things, we will be forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ who takes away our sins and gently reminds us, sometimes prodding a little bit, reminds us that we are to love and to forgive. And even when we don't know how, or when we don't feel that we want to, he reminds us gently again and again and again that we are to love and to forgive. And when we do, we will know that we are part of the communion of saints that include all those who've go, who have gone before us who are believers in Jesus and to all those that are here today and all those that will come in the future. And the fun thing about it is we don't get to choose who they are. We get to know them 
and see our family grow over and over and over as we meet each one. Amen. There are few people in the history of the world that we all agree are pretty much entitled to the word saint. The ones that give of themselves in such deep and compassionate ways that, that we are just amazed and we, we think of them as people that we should live up to. One of those people was a person we call Mother Teresa. Not only was she good, and not only did she speak out to the world and remind us over and over to be good, 
but she did it for such a long time. She really embodied the words that she said that, that um, it wasn't about extraordinary love, it was about ordinary love done in extraordinary ways. But after she passed, Sometime a couple of years later, somebody who was her confessor, which means he was her, her counselor, her spiritual guide, released some of her diaries in which she had shared with him some of her doubts and frustrations and, and thoughts on days that were not good days. Of course, these were quickly published, and there were people who said, ah, oh, see, even Mother Teresa doesn't believe she's not the person we thought she was. She was exactly the person we thought she was. She was a person who struggled on days, who got frustrated on days, who lost her way some days, and yet she kept coming back to Jesus, the author of her faith. As you go into your life today, I encourage you to love people and forgive them. I know you won't get it right all the time, but know that when you do, when you do get it right and you say something encouraging or helpful <clears throat> or lovely to someone, it will make a difference in their life. And they'll be reminded that they are part of the family. So go in peace and make your family bigger every day. Amen.